Claire Visco said, is it OK that Donald Trump can't keep a secret? <laughs> now, there is so much to say about Donald Trump. And, um, Armando, you in particular have a lot to add to I that. have a lot. Hang on, I've got some... Uh... Oh, for the Trump jar? Yep. I, brought, I went to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some... Oh, that's a minstrel's packet. <laughs> got that. Thank you. Um, I've got a massive charity check. <laughs> for, uh, for, 50 for, the, for 50 pounds, pounds which I will pay. <laughs> Putting it all in there. Putting it all in there. Thank you. Uh, look, before we get your opinion, there are two main Trump stories this week. One suggests that he gave away classified information to Russian officials when they visited the White House. Uh, another suggests that he asked the former director of the FBI to stop an investigation into former National Security Advisor Mike Flynn's ties to Russia, then fired him when he refused. Armando, go. Right, now, here's my, thing, here's my theory about how Trump works, which is... Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, when you think, uh, you sort of... Your brain selects words, right? <laughs> From all yeah. the words possible. Your brain selects the words... Yep. ..and then you say the words that your brain has selected. Yeah. Yep. What Trump does is he just says every word there is. <laughs> <laughs> Which means, like, the first two or three words are fine. They're absolutely fine. If he stopped after three words, that's fine. Yeah. But it does mean that sooner or later, like, like the kind of, you know, if you put an infinite number of monkeys in a room, they will eventually come up with Hamlet. Yeah. If he gets through his like, infinite number of words, he will say terrible, terrible things <laughs> sooner or later. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I'm like Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> well, Trump made yes. a, he made a speech this week in which he claimed no politician in history has been treated worse than him. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people pointed out he might get a few arguments from JFK, yeah. Nelson Mandela, <laughs> Aung San Suu Kyi, even Giles Brandreth tweeted to say, and I have to say, the crew and Nantwich advertiser was pretty rotten to me, if we're being honest. <laughs> Uh, he also... Now, today, the big news is... Don't touch that button. Sorry, you're right. He apparently, <laughs> while talking to the Russians, he, he basically described what he did to James Comey and said, I had to fire this nut job. Well, the fire of Comey was unbelievable. It could have only been more suspicious if he'd done it while burning his clothes in the garden. Like... <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable that he... He, he said he fired him because he's no good at the job. Yeah. He might as well have got... He's no good at the job. I mean, he hasn't caught me yet. That's essentially <laughs> what he was saying. Well, Comey is due to give evidence at a Senate hearing next mm. week, and Donald Trump is on his way to Saudi Arabia, where he's due to give a speech on Islam. So there's every chance that next Friday he'll either be impeached or beheaded. Or <laughs> um, well, they could uh, just chop off one of his tiny hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come um, on, may not on this show! <laughs> Keith Langridge said, is it OK that Trump has resorted to fake news by doctoring Time magazine covers in his resorts? Now, you've already put, um, well, your credit card and an Oyster card in here. <laughs> <laughs> an Oyster card? Stop touching. <laughs> um, I was going to say, do you not get recognised on the tube? But of course not, because you don't go as the ape. <laughs> <laughs> While three CNN reporters resigned for making up a story about Donald Trump's ties to Russia, some of his golf courses were asked to remove this fake Time magazine cover from their walls. It's not... It, the president... That's not... That, he basically so just, just like, mocked one up. So it's just like a card that he's got off Moonpig. <laughs> a a front yeah, cover of Oi magazine that he got off Sean Spicer. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we'll move on. <laughs> uh, Let's, let's, let's talk she about Donald Trump. the sack Trump. of Rome, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mark Jason White said, is it OK to start warming to President Trump following his remarks regarding the Manchester attack? Hashtag losers. Now, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I'm going to say something about positive th about Donald Trump. I may need to take money from the Trump jar. <laughs> uh, Don't do that. Don't Trump, do that. Trump described the people that, that committed this act as losers, uh, which is actually great, because we, we shouldn't be suggesting that a death cult represents a whole religion. We should just mock them as losers. Unfortunately... Trump is the guy who spent the entire presidential campaign suggesting a death cult represented an entire religion. So we're kind of torn. I wish he'd done the L as well. <laughs> <laughs> Although he'd have done it and people would have gone, fucking hell, those are small hands, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't. <laughs> Trump also made a deal to sell $350 billion worth of arms. Well, when I say arms. Uh... <laughs> He's selling arms to Saudi Arabia over 10 years, a country that some people say funds terrorism. And when I say some people, I mean Donald Trump in 2011. Uh, Richard, what do you make of Donald Trump's work? I mean... <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, I'm yet to be entirely convinced. <laughs> <laughs> um, he seems in some ways 
a bit like... It seems like they had an election to have a homecoming king and queen. <laughs> right, yeah. And, and he seemed to represent someone who's maybe once good at football and everyone's decided he kind of looks... Mm -hmm. I, you see, I feel there's a fundamental jock geek division. Yeah. Right. And I feel... Which side do you fall on? <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Don't make me uncoil my muscle. <laughs> <It's>, um, <laughs> thank you. That's, that's, what I, that's what I used to say to the jocks to get them off my back. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you insult my tweed jacket? <laughs> I know I'm nine, but I think, yeah. you know, he's, he's a jock, and I think um, th there's a fundamental distrust of geeks that somehow, that if an intelligent person like um, Hillary Clinton, who is intelligent, yeah. uh, somehow the whole country's lunch money will get stolen, that they'll, they'll just get pushed over, and you'd, they'd almost rather have this kind of bully. Yeah, I mean, right. He's a, I, would, to I, mean, I don't wish to be partisan, oh. but he seems somewhat... Um, Aggressive to me. Um, <laughs> well, he made his... there's a sense that he will be protected. I mean, he put some tweets in capitals, so I think that's aggressive. Yeah, it is. <laughs> he was in the down. Middle East this week as part of an international trip, which also marked the first time since becoming president that he slept outside the White House in a building that doesn't have his own name on it. Went to Saudi Arabia, yeah. Israel, yeah. and met the Pope all in the space of a few days. Yeah. That's a tight itinerary. I think he's on a saga holiday. <laughs> with that sort of tight <laughs> itinerary. Yeah, I think they've booked it and it's like 12 p.m. Lunch with the Pope, 1 to 3 p.m. leisure time, 3 to 4 aqua aerobics, yeah. 5 prompt dinner with the captain. <laughs> we would love to have a week in which we don't talk about Donald Trump. Unfortunately, this is not that week. Dubious <laughs> George said, Is it okay to wonder whether Trump thought the Paris Climate Accord was a new car from Honda? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> President of the Free World announced yesterday that the USA would officially withdraw from the historic Paris Climate Change Agreement. This puts them in line with those giants Syria and Nicaragua as the only two countries not to agree to the accord. Syria clearly have a war going on. Mm. They've got other things they need to look after. Yeah. Nicaragua didn't think it went far enough. Not geographically, I mean... Nicaragua pulling out, like... Gives a shit. It's like if Yaya Sanogo said he wanted to leave Arsenal. <laughs> no, I agree, Adam. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Well, let's That's go back my to last game. niche football reference. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, I mean, yeah, it's kind of why every week it's kind of depressing with Donald Trump. Yep. I was like, this morning I was like ripping the plastic window out of an envelope mm. so that I could. <laughs> recycle the rest of it, and I was thinking, what's the fucking point? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and here's the thing, in announcing the withdrawal from the accord, Trump said, and I quote, I was elected to represent the citizens of Pittsburgh, not Paris. Oops. He... <laughs> he does know the Paris Agreement doesn't just cover the people of Paris, <laughs> right? <laughs> but does he think only people in Geneva have human rights? <laughs> He then said, at what point does America get demeaned? At what point does America get laughed at as a country? <laughs> um, that's shit aside. I mean, yeah, I hate to tell you, Donald, we've been laughing at Americans for years. <laughs> we laugh at you whenever you try to pronounce Loughborough. We've been, <laughs> we've been laughing at you since you gave Piers Morgan a second career. <laughs> I'll tell you at what point America gets laughed at. The point at which you said you weren't elected to represent the citizens of Paris, you Jaffa-faced ass clown. 